WAR! Hey internet, I'm Steve the Cosmonaut, and this is Raffo. Rhythm of War, book four in the Stormlight Archive, is one of the most connected books to the wider Cosmere, mostly because it's 1,200 pages. Let's talk about part one. Spoilers for the entire Cosmere. Also, like and subscribe. The prologue, the night of Gavilar's assassination, this time from Navani's perspective. She meets a Sudan talking with a couple Ardents, including Rusher Chris, who's holding a box with a flower painted on it. Ghost bloods? We haven't heard anything about that guy or that box yet. I'm never sure how much to include from these prologues because literally anything could end up being significant. She also sees the house steward Gera, a white bearded man with too many rings on his fingers. It's revealed later that he's a Faru chemist in possession of an AVR with an unknown power and is altering his appearance somehow to give himself epicanthic folds. She walks in on Gavilar talking with Nail and Kalak about transporting Spren off-world in aluminum boxes. He's got a bunch of strange spheres on the table and he notices her without her making noise. Life sense? Or notified by a Spren? Spoilers! You'll see. Kalak noticed Shalash there defacing artwork. He wants out. Gavilar is a jerk. He wants Yasna to marry Amaram. He claims that Navani is the opposite of light, a thing that destroys light. I have discovered the entrance to the realm of gods and legends, and once I join them, my kingdom will never end. I will never end. Is he talking about Shadesmar or something else? Gera, the palace steward, there long enough to be a fixture, overcome with grief, tells her that Gavilar is dead. Yasna saw the assassination. We got her POV in the Oathbringer prologue. Anguish Spren manifest as teeth growing from the walls. I don't want to know what those look like in Shadesmar. All Gavilar's spheres are gone, presumably taken by Zeth. The epigraphs of part one are segments of a lecture on Fabriel mechanics by Navani. Good deets on how Fabrials work. She's wanting to know how the Thalans manipulate Stormlight, something Risen implies she knows in Dawn Shard. Chapter one. It's been a full year since the end of Oathbringer. Refugees from Herdaz are coming to Hearthstone, which makes sense given their locations. Liren has heard rumors of a plague in the West. Likely the common cold, brought by our three seventeenth shard friends in the Pure Lake. Liren meets the Mink, the Herdazian general we first met in an Oathbringer interlude. Eyes of red and blue. Kaladins fought seven of nine fused. We see what they were working on when Risen visited Eurythiru at the beginning of Dawn Shard, as well as mention of the aluminum discovery made in that book. The ship is called Fourth Bridge, in honor of Kaladin's rescue of Dalinar at the Tower. The original, again found wedged in a chasm after it was lost in the Battle of Narek, is embedded in the top deck. Navani would have preferred to bring Isaseek, the royal cartographer, and also a reference to Isaac Stewart. Dalinar recharges Kaladin's Stormlight. Navani glimpses into Shadesmar and hears a pure tone. There are secrets here to unlock. Thanks for the hint, Brandon. <laughs> She's researching the tower and the sibling, but that's internal, so I'm not going to get into it. The sibling was first mentioned in Oathbringer. Shallan gets kidnapped by the Sons of Honor and taken into the chasms. She startles a Kremling with dark purple colorings. Wonder who's watching. Ash has been giving them info on the Fused. She and Taln were taken by Yasna at the end of Oathbringer. Kaladin echoes his envy of the Shane Im Grace from his fight in Shadesmar. Leshwi died in their last contest, by Kord, but Kaladin recognizes her marbled skin patterns. This means in a live-action adaptation, Fused could be played by a different actor each incarnation just with the same makeup. That's cool. Heavenly Ones can fly forever without running out of Void Light. We first hear that Voidbringers don't leak like humans in the Way of Kings. We see Scar, this guy, based on this guy, and Kara, based on her. This is a depiction of the artist method for capturing Spren, which Navani talks about in a previous paragraph. The interesting thing here is this. Translated talks about the use of a pewter cage to suspend the gemstone, which increases the heat of the fabriol the tighter it's wound. Pewter, the internal physical pushing metal. That's explained in not women's script in the next few epigraphs, with zinc and brass being particularly significant, zinc rioting and brass soothing. Bronze creates a warning fabriel, with Heliodor being used currently for 
good reason? Tin decreases nearby attributes, internal physical pulling metal. Iron creates an attractor fabriel, but repellers are simply theoretical at this point. Why isn't it just steel? Logic spren are behind fabriel clocks. Chapter 6. Such a good bait and switch. Vale is there to assassinate ILI, meaning we don't expect it to actually be radiant. I mean, I did, but I'm smart. Sigzil gets speared by Leshwi, and Cal remembers people he failed. Tien, Nalma, the slave who got caught in a bear trap, Shia LaBeouf, and Elokar. Renarin summons a glowy ball, which is lovely, and Novani thinks it should be red. He can't do standard light-weaving things. If that's the case, what does he do with Moash? Different people experience different things when Dalinar opens the perpendicularity. Navani sees Shadesmar and hears a pure tone. Rushu felt a thump and got vertigo. Yasna released her journals of her travels through Shadesmar. Can we get a copy of those, Brandon? Sounds like a great novella. Navani theorizes Bondsmith power comes from beyond Shadesmar. The spiritual realm, or beyond beyond? Ayalai seems to have died from Blackbane. Again. For being tough to make, it sure gets around. In Shadesmar, Soulcasters manifested as small, unresponsive spren hovering with their eyes closed. I'm glad Adolin is as confused by all the different secret societies as we are. Shallan isn't sure why the Ghostbloods want all those secrets. Uh, there's always another. Ayalai was researching other planets. Nalathis, Nalthus from Warbreaker, Skadariel, Skadriel, Mistborn, Tal, Dane, White Sand, and Thydakar, who leads them. Venli can peek into Shadesmar. She shares the transportation surge with Elskollars. The master tailor Venli brings to Leshwi is Yokska, Adolin's favorite from Oathbringer. At least according to Venli's Spren, there have been no Singer Radiance before her. One power draws Secret Spren, the Alarm Spren in Kolinar, but the other doesn't. This was the same for Shallan or Kaladin in Oathbringer. Are the Radiant powers similarly paired, like Allomantic Metals, internal and external? That would be really interesting. Kaladin has severe PTSD and severe rrr, depression. Rock is going to face judgment in the peaks. He says, when we meet again, I suspect it shall not be in this world, and that he goes to the gods. Is the punishment exile into Shadesmar? How likely is it Melon meets Rock at the end of Lost Metal? Chapter 13, lots of references to Shallan's past with her brothers. A creation spren shaped like a necklace. She gets a span read message simply saying the spren will come from Sia Anat, whom Mraze wanted her to contact when they went to Kolinar in Oathbringer. Speaking of Mraze, he's at least at the fourth heightening, as he can always sense when Shallan is coming, no matter how quiet she's trying to be. And of course, he's got an AVR. A green one, probably similar to Kokerly. He tells Shallan exactly what the Ghostbloods are after, explaining Nalthus, Scadriel, the entire relationship between Investiture and Connection, Thydakar, Gavilar, so much information. We see the reconstruction of the palace in Kolinar, why they were knocking down all the walls at the end of Oathbringer. Why is Alethkar called Avendla, Land of the Second Advance? Probably something to do with the Desolations. The Nine say humans have little understanding of the nature of the tones of the world. Well, that's gonna change real quick, isn't it? Raboniel enters, saying there's only one Night Radiant of the Fourth Ideal. That would be Yasna, right? Raboniel orchestrated a plague at the end of the False Desolation. Have we heard of that? After Kaladin's retirement announcement, Syl takes the shape of this seen in Navani's notebook pages in Oathbringer. Syl apparently saw her sketching it. Relaine taught the humans how the listeners were growing crops, not just in the light of infused gemstones, but with specific rhythms as well that life spren seemed to react to. Those look like very healthy plants. <laughs> Again, he mentions that humans can't sing the pure tones of Roshar. Time for Kaladin to fight the laundry. Zahel can see, or at least sense, Sill. He's hanging a bunch of colorful scarves. His own? Odd how the man's skin could seem smooth as a child's one moment, then furrow like a grandfather's the next. Tweak in that divine breath, he gave up the sword. Ha! Seeing all the subtle applications of Awakening Zahel's pulling off here is so 
cool. A face and figure in a sheet to distract Cal, a byproduct of awakening is mimicking physiology. Grabbing his arm with another scarf, potentially causing a scarf to lengthen, spreading sheets to grapple. Also, at this point, he has to be at the tenth heightening. He doesn't speak to issue any of his commands, and mental commands can only come at God King level. Vasher either left Nalthus with a wealth of breath, or he's figured out how to convert. Or maybe being super invested with Stormlight gives him perks of greater heightenings without increasing his awakening ability? Greater voltage without changing amperage? Cal recognizes the fighting style from Azure. I won't hold my breaths. Intentional capitalization there. There's a couple times when Zahel moves too fast or too dexterous to be natural, which seems ferukemi y Breath grants health, can it grant strength and stamina? We see him retrieve the breath from all of the cloth, then he throws a gray scarf at Kaladin's feet. Not white, so he doesn't have perfect invocation. Maybe he's just had a lot of practice and figured out mental commands? Zahel knew Hoyd as dust when he was younger, probably a reference to the storyteller in the Court of the Gods. He calls himself a Type 2 invested entity, no longer a Type 1. He's got a fossil. Brandon likes ammonites, so it's probably one of those. Nalthus doesn't have any, and Roshar probably doesn't either. So where did that one come from? Cognitive shadows are fossils of souls, everything in them replaced with something else, but still in the same shape. Sill is a type 1. He talks about nailing a shadow back into a body. Sounds an awful lot like Kelsier. The longer one of us exists, the more like a spren we become. Consumed by a singular purpose, our minds bound and chained by intent. That's why she takes our memories. She knows we aren't the actual people who died, but something else given a corpse to inhabit. Referring to endowment. They drop the king's drop with the thrill into the ocean. Moalach, which causes the death rattles, used to be in Shinovar. Nightblood makes Navani nauseous. Eurythiru is 10 tiers of 18 floors each. Why 18? Adolin invented horse therapy. Gavilar is overcoming trauma, though he's still small for his age. The anti-void light gemstone is nearly flawless, as it's held that light for so long, and wasn't grown as a gem heart. What other ways do they have of getting gemstones? We've heard of mining, but it's very difficult. Shalon and Dalinar do the map thing for the mink. Dalinar may be able to do other similar team-ups with other orders as a bondsmith. When Dalinar walks through the hollow map, it behaves similarly to the mists with an alamance or burning metals swirling around. Odium is a punchline, Dalinar, but not to any joke you've been told. Taln still nuts. Ash tells Navani and Dalinar about the Oath Pact, Braze and Ashen as planets, the Shin having the Honor Blades, and theories of the Oath Pact being reforged. The Shin apparently had prophecies of this return? Yasna's about to Abraham Lincoln Alethkar. Four score and, well, like, a year ago, Carbranth physicians have figured out inoculations, probably from all the killing they did before. I get why Liren's so happy Cal's going back to surgeoning, but it still feels so douchey. The captain over the engineers building the weight system in the tower is probably the same guy Lopen taught to tie his shoes one-handed. Sigzil is the one who recommends an envoy to the Honor Spren. His Spren, who we don't have a name for, she thinks it would be a good idea. Interludes! Syl refers to Kord's shard plate as a lot of corpses, but they're content. Syl totally has ADHD. Should have added that in my representation video. Other Honor Spren aren't like her, except maybe Rua, who we've never heard speak. Honor Spren, and all intelligent Spren, are new to Roshar, only 10,000 years old. Does that coincide with the Shattering? She wonders if she could help Windspren become smart. Theory. Time was a funny thing. It was always flowing along in the background like a river, but bring too much power to bear, and it warped. It slowed. It wanted to pause and take a look. Anytime too much power, too much investiture, too much self congregated, realms became porous, and time behaved oddly. 
wibbly wobbly. She drops some knowledge about bondsmiths. Your abilities are what made the original Oath Pact, she said. And they existed and were named long before the Knights Radiant were founded. A bondsmith connected the Heralds to Braze, made them immortal, and locked our enemies away. A bondsmith bound other surges and brought humans to Roshar, fleeing their dying world. A bondsmith created, or at least discovered, the Nahel Bond, the ability of Spren and humans to join together into something better. You connect things, Dalinar. Realms, ideas, people. Sia'anat! Keep secrets from Odium himself. She exists between the physical and cognitive, though dreams of a perfect place for her and her children. She drops info about the unmade, most of which we already knew. Also about the nature of shards and vessels. Important reminders for what's going to happen at the end of the book. Taravangian had long suspected he would not get a funeral. Ironic, because he probably will in the next book, but it won't be his body. The diagram, both the document and the organization, is disbanded. That's two secret societies down. <laughs> Danlin, who we first met courting Adolin in Way of Kings, is to be sent on a time-consuming secret quest. I have no idea who Dalgo is. He warns about trusting Dova, who is actually the Herald Bata. End of part one! Like I said, there's a lot in this book. And I'm probably going more in depth than I need to. Next week, we'll dive into part two, where Brandon drops some huge nuggets about the wider Cosmere. New shard names, anyone? Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and consider joining my Patreon. I'm filming all of these Cosmere Connection videos at the same time, so my patrons can see them as soon as I finish editing. If you want to watch the rest of the Cosmere Connections for Rhythm of War right now, plus lots of other cool perks, join these wonderful folks on Patreon. Like Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, and Chris. We're continuing through Rhythm of War next week, so go read and find out. Yep, 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 yep.